Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And today, I'm on the Blue Ridge Parkway. That's the Blue Ridge Parkway right here. And it's one of my favorite little pull-offs when I want to do a quick activation. Um, I like this spot. I was hoping for a little more leaf cover. Um, <laughs> down in Asheville proper, it's greening up really nicely. You can tell here at this altitude, it's starting to green up here at my house, which is probably a good 800 feet higher than this, maybe more than that, um, it's still just starting to green. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. It is really beautiful and very active out here today. Everybody wants to come out and take advantage of the nice weather, including park activators. That's why I'm here. So anyway, <laughs> I actually just brought a small kit with me. I don't have a lot of time. My daughter is, um, at uh, just dropped her off at a class will be over in like an hour and a half and i've got to get back into town i got some other errands to run but i still wanted to take the time just to come out here to the parkway and play radio before i get started i just want to thank all of my patreon and coffee fund supporters as i say each time i don't put ads in my videos um i you know have it i've never had ads in my videos that i know of and so patreon and the coffee fund they really are the way to support my channel which i really appreciate it but if you don't have the means to do so, don't worry. Um, don't worry at all. Um, I just appreciate it when people can. So thank you. So now let's get a line in the tree. And I'm going to make this challenging for myself, I think. Because I think I want to go for I think I think want to go for these limbs over here. Maybe this one. This one may be a little easier. I'll tell you a story about these. Like these types of branches that are kind of all gnarly on the end, those are the worst to throw a line through because your line kind of wants to stick to them. Um, I could go for this really high branch here, but the problem is if I launch it up that way, my throw line, my throw weight's probably gonna go way down the hill over there and I don't want that to happen. Like, I'd like to keep it a little more local than that. So what I may do is try to throw the line from this direction and try to hit the tree. And I don't know if I can even get all this in the video or not, but we'll see what we can do. I gotta be a little careful here. You can't see this time of year, but this is poison ivy. And it's all over the place up here. In the summer, you can see it much better. It's really thick in this area. Oh, look at the crocuses over there. It's usually really thick in this area. So you gotta watch it. That stuff can, you can carry it in with you. How can I set this up so you can see this? Maybe I should set it up so you can't see it. Because more than likely, I'm gonna make a fool of myself with this. But I'm gonna try anyway to make a fool of myself. Um, <laughs> I, think I, can do, I can do that pretty easily. Uh, hopefully I'll be in the shot. Who knows? I really need to hire a camera person to come with me, don't I? Okay, let's get the line. I almost started this activation without turning on the camera. I was kind of getting ahead of myself. Okay. Okay, line. Let's do this. Let's do it on the first go. Let's do it on the first go. I would like that. I just I have to be careful. I don't want to throw it too. It needs to go vertical almost. <laughs> That's a little hard to do, but let me get a little bit of this line out first. There we go. We'll speed it up. That was too vertical. I didn't hit it at all. So when you have this happen on a really, like a really um, high throw and there's nothing stopping the weight it just goes up and it smacks the ground that's when lesser throw weights will break apart the buckshot will come out of them these weaver throw weights I buy I buy it for this very reason because arborists use them because they're very very good and they last come on we can do this okay that definitely went up and it definitely came down yeah, that'll do fine. That will do just fine. Let's go over here and set up now. I'll set right here, maybe. You know, I kind of want to sell from this grassy patch. I'll just make the antenna not as vertical. Uh, I don't know. Right here is fine, actually. This will do the trick. Let's get things set up. Okay, this may be a little distant here for you, but all I have with me today is a little 
It's a little Tufton random wire antenna. This is basically the speaker wire antenna that I've used forever, just in a much more portable format. And uh, this is like one of my standards. I love this, especially when I'm using a radio like I'm using today, which is the KX2, a radio that I hope has enough battery capacity because I didn't charge it before I came out here and I can't remember the last time I charged it. So we'll find out together. Here we go, and this is the counterpoise. The red one is, you can see here sort of the red one is the radiator, black one's the counterpoise. Here we go. Come on, come on, there, there we go. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and set up my seat first. This is my Helinox chair. I think I said something last year when I first bought this. I got it at REI on a just a killer deal. It was a garage sale item, which is really the best deal you can get at REI if you find a good garage sale item. So I got it for a fraction of the real cost. And I used to think to myself, why would someone pay that much for just a, you know, a little camp chair? And, ooh, sorry about that. And once I got this, I realized why they do. Um, and in fact, I'd buy another one in a heartbeat at full price. It is super insanely lightweight. So I can take this on a soda activation and I don't even feel it in my pack. It is so cra crazy lightweight and very rugged and sturdy. So I am sold on these. I used to use a little similar folding chair. You've probably seen me use in a lot of other videos. And I loved it. Um, I bought it at Aldi for only $16 or something ages ago. And I loved that chair until I got this one. <laughs> I got this one. And I just realized how easy life can be with a chair like this. I think it's worth the cost if you do a lot of this sort of thing. Now what I'm going to do now is string out my radiator. And I think I'm going to throw it off to this side over here. I don't think it really makes a big difference. But I'm going to throw it off into the woods over here. Being careful not to throw it into poison ivy. You know, I'm going to put it on the path here. There's a little manway here that goes to um, the Mountains to Sea Trail. This Helinox chair will probably blow over here in a second with a breeze. Golly, man. I tell you what, the poison ivy is worse than it was last year. It's starting to get out in the path and everything now. Okay, and let's go ahead and get the let's go ahead and get the antenna up in the tree. Then I'll figure out how to position everything. Well, you know what? I'm going to attach it. No, I'm not going to attach it to the radio. That doesn't make sense. I've been itching to do a POTA activation. I have been itching to do one. I'm really eager to do another soda activation. Really want to. Okay, so yeah, I can maybe I can manipulate manipulate this so that it'll actually. Um, I think this will be a really good position for the antenna. Looking at it now, I think it will. I'll put the throwaway down here. This antenna is so insanely lightweight. It's just a little thin wire. What, a 26 gauge wire? There's just nothing to it. So putting it up in a tree, just the weight of the line itself will hold it up there in position, especially when it's not a really windy day. I'm gonna move this around this. There we go. Let's move it over here and around. There we go, that's more vertical. Not that that makes any difference at all. I'll start pulling it up. I think this is 28 and a half feet, this radiator. And I set my backpack on top of it. Let me pull this off. Yeah, I really need that camera person. I need to have a lot more Patreon supporters to hire a camera person than one. I wouldn't want to be with a camera person. They'd be too fussy about my shots and stuff, and then they'd probably insist that I actually edit my videos. Speaking of which, 
If you are new to my channel, then you must be looking for a good cure for your insomnia. And you know what, I'm gonna throw my counterpoise down this way in front of me here. Just in the rare instance that someone comes up that man way from the Mountains to Sea Trail. I don't think they will. There we go. Now let's see if we can't just like set up now. Here we go. I've got this new tripod I'm trying out. So far, really like it. The base is not as wide as my other one, but this one's made by Joby and it seems to do the trick. Kind of like it. Okay, let's get my knee board out. Oh wait, yes, good, I've got my glasses here. Take off my sunglasses and put them in here. This is exciting stuff, isn't it? Like watching paint dry. <laughs> this is what it's about when you're doing an activation. You know, a lot of the activation is just setting up and taking down. And there are times like today, I'm actually not in a rush, a bad rush, yeah. My daughter can wait if I'm a little late today. She's got stuff she can do at the library, so if I'm a bit late, who cares? Well, maybe she cares. I don't think she cares a whole lot, though, to be honest. I think she, uh, she's cool with me. My daughter is, uh, my family's very supportive of my radio addiction here. Now, what did I have this set up for last time that I did this with my shock, uh, shock cords? Because that's not really the way I want to do it here. I'm going to undo this. I think of what radio I may have had on here last time. Maybe the MTR? Maybe it's my mountain topper I had on here. I don't know. I'm going to run the shock cord through this way. And it'll hold the K8, uh, KX2 on pretty nicely. Come on, get in there. Oh, I'll put it through this one, maybe. There we go. I'll just tie this off now. Probably more clever ways to do this. I probably need to terminate this with some kind of little pin or something, and I can put it through the uh, holes much easier. Check that out. Now, I do need my key. This time I'm going to use my KXPD1 key. And there we go. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to turn on my other microphone here. That way. I'll have even better audio, maybe, from the radio. Let's just do it. I've got two mics, why not do this? I've been so impressed with these DJI mics, I just can't even describe. I bought these back on the Black Friday sale last year, and I've been so insanely pleased with them. Let's see here, I'll turn this guy on, and that should show up. Yes, it does, good. <laughs> I'll just sit there on the side. And do I need anything else out of here? Yes, I do. I need, I need my uh, logging book. I'll put the rest of that up. And you know what? I'm actually gonna keep this pretty darn simple and I'm going to only log to paper. I'm not gonna log, I'm not gonna log on hammers. As much as I kinda want to, I kind of don't want to either. US 3378, the BRP, Blue Ridge Parkway. Probably this ought to activate more than anything else. Um, let's see, what is the date today is the 18th of April. You're probably getting this pretty soon after I made this video and the reason why is I'm behind on POTA activations right now. So 
Um, so I'm, I'm just a little bit behind on them. Okay. I think we're going to start. You know I'm going to start on the high bands. I don't think that conditions are actually that great today. But I'm still going to try to start on the high bands, I think. This is all I will need to have my ATU engaged. ATU mode. Auto. Because this is a totally random wire antenna. It totally relies on the ATU to make matches. You know, I'll probably leave that flat. I think this is going to work fine with that microphone there. I'm trying to decide if I should readjust a little bit, and I think I will. I think I'm going to move my seat just a bit. Um, <laughs> to see if the radio will hang on. I know it will. There we go. I want the sun to be at a different angle here for me. There we go. Now let's see if you can see anything. Okay, let's see if we can get a... One point one to one. It's funny sometimes it like shows it and you think it's not going to get better than a two to five or something and then all of a sudden a one to one comes through at the end. Okay, I may have to lift this up just to help out with the audio there. You know, I don't either. It still has that sound, so let's not worry about it. Keep it flat. It makes it a little bit better angle for my... Um... Okay, now what do I need to do? I need to check the time. So it's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 1800 hours. check and make sure that I've got, that I'm getting spotted. Lately the RBN has not been kind to me. Well, the RBN has, but I've been timing my activations when that connection between the podocyte and the ribbon have been down. So far I'm not seeing anything. By the way, conditions are supposed to be pretty bad today, so <laughs> I'm probably a little crazy for even trying these higher bands. They're probably washed out. But I just, I, I, I've really enjoyed trying 10 meters when I can. So I'm going to go ahead and spot myself. I'm not seeing anything popping up right now. They've improved cell phone reception up here. It used to be that I've got really poor uh, spots up here. Okay, let's see. 280535. Reference is US-3378. I'll just put CW in the comments, hit done, hit spot. Now I'm spotted. There we go. Now I'll take a photo while I'm thinking about it. to be good. Looking to see if the RBN will spot me now. If the RBN isn't picking me up at all, which so far it hasn't, probably means that ten's wiped out. And I'll move my way down the band. I know twenty will probably be fine. 
for at least for finishing off the activation. I've been doing these videos for so long that when I actually go out and do activations without my camera, I found myself talking to myself. <laughs> I start to like start a dialogue with nobody listening. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not filming. I don't have to do that. Yeah, I'm not even getting a ribbon spot on this, so we're gonna move down the band. Let's see where I see other people, maybe I can. Most people are on 20, a few people on 15. There we go. Let's go down to, let's see if I can hear anybody. Okay, 042. Somebody's on 042. Let me move off a little bit. Hit my ATU button real quick. Um, yeah, I don't hear anybody there. Ooh, didn't get a good one. Be more persistent now. May need to reposition my counterpoise. I'll try that. Let's see here. Let's move the counterpoise a different direction. Sometimes that can help on these little antennas. When you don't have any sort of transformer, you're really putting all of the work on your ATU. If it can't do it, that's okay. I can move down to the 20 meter band or something. Yeah. It doesn't want to do it. Okay. We'll move down to 17 meters. So we can get a match here. There we go. I probably need to trim up this antenna a little bit, maybe. 1.5 to 1. I could be more persistent, but that's a good. I'm going to touch the key. There we go. Now let's see if the RBN spots me and moves me down to the 17 meter band. I need at least a couple of calls before the RBN will find me. Yeah, we've got a CME coming in if it hasn't hit us already. And um, so not exactly the best time to be playing radio. Band conditions have been kind of bad lately. But the weather's nice. Oh my goodness, 20, I'm gonna have to go back up here to 28. I see here that Vince is on 28.050 right now. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna move. Just in the wildest chance I could hear him. It's got a one to one match. 050. Not hearing you, Vince. It's this, it's this uh, World Amateur Radio Day special event station that uh, Vince has been doing, VE6 RAC. Ah, but I can't hear you, Vince. I can't even hear your chasers. That's, that's showing just how bad the band is right now. I should hear some people trying to call him because that's a special event station too. We may try it a little bit later. Let's go one more time. 
Okay. Oh, it did finally get me. Good, maybe. <laughs> I got the. Well, that was good timing. Well, you can hear it. The band's a little noisy, too. That's a good indication that conditions are not great. You hear all that? Okay. You know what? Let's go down to the 20 meter band. Get down to 20 meters. I have a hunch that 20 meters is healthier. <laughs> we'll find out. So we'll try again. Not hearing anybody there, so we'll go, go ahead and hit the ATU button. What? Are you kidding me? Let me redeploy the counterpoise again. I should be getting a lot better than that. You know, this is actually the first time I've used this particular random wire antenna. This is one that I was, maybe it's not 28 and a half feet, and I thought it was. There we go, we'll try this again. It's going out in the same direction, kind of, but maybe it'll make a difference. I'd rather not do it on. There we go. It's hard to deploy such a lightweight counterpoise. <laughs> it is really challenging. What I'm gonna do is wrap it around my hand here, like my figure eight, to deploy it. That way it won't, oops, I'm going backwards. tangle like it's doing right now. Going off into the woods over here. Let's see if that works. Tell if that was somebody there or not. I move to 20. Oh, 
This has made for an interesting activation so far. I may just be getting my tin and heading home. I don't care, it's actually fun being out here, even despite all this traffic. Plus I'm seeing a lot of trash here. I don't know why people leave trash at this particular site. I don't like it though. There's a shoe and there's like some other garbage I'm gonna try to pick up before I leave. again and see if I'm getting any kind of RBN action. Okay, was that... Um, okay. <laughs> he always says hi to Hazel. <laughs> Are you in Massachusetts too? Yep. Oh, there we go, yes. I know you. Sorry, the sun, I know the sun and the shadow are probably really playing merry havoc with the
Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm seeing a red tail hawk fly overhead right now. This is my apoda. And soda. <laughs> Okay. Okay, maybe that was it. Okay. Steve always gets through, it seems. <laughs> Got a good signal into Florida, but listen how that faded. That faded way down. Hear that QSB? That's deep.
Ooh, you came way up. Oh, nice. Is there anybody else out there or somebody else? You know what? I've got a lot here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And my daughter's getting out of class right now. I'll do like one more CQ. Nobody's out there. Uh, okay, you know what, before I do that, turn this down, take a couple shots here while I'm thinking about it. There we go, I got my whole log. This, it is hard to take photos when uh, you got this much sunlight at this time of day. Um, but man, oh man, this is fun. It really doesn't get any more fun than this. Just kind of watching cars go by, hawks in the sky. <laughs> I've seen a few jets go by. Yeah, this is what we're supposed to be out here doing. Okay, yeah, let me take one nice clean photo of my log here. So I've got that. There we go. Now you should always look for my um, activation reports on uh, QRPR.com. I always have a link to them. Let's just put up everything now. First of all, I'm going to take off my microphone from here, turn it off. And put it up. 
So I'll leave it hanging around. I do love this mic system a lot. It is the cat's meow. So glad I did this. It was actually Patreon supporters and Coffee Fund supporters that made all that possible. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. I try to upgrade my equipment. You know, my stuff's actually pretty simple. People ask me about my year a lot. You know, I think people who want to do their own videos and stuff, and I try to help people when they ask. And I, I usually put links to my gear in my field reports too, but uh, the truth is I get away with just using one camera. I have two, but I don't really set up my shots for two cameras. It's just not kind of how I do my um, videos. Um, yeah, they're less professional. And it is kind of a POV sort of thing here. But it's manageable, and I can do this, and it doesn't require a lot of time for me to edit them. I base, it's, it's as people say, warts and all. It's just, it's just everything. I, I, don't, I don't take anything out of my videos, ever. Um, if things go wrong, that's going to be in my video. If things go well, that'll be in my video, too. I just kind of think it gives... You know, it's not for everyone. And I kind of say... I jokingly say when people also ask me, how do I start my YouTube channel? I'll tell them, but don't follow my rules. Because the truth is, I, I kind of jokingly say that my channel is kind of algorithm proof. It does all the things the you, YouTube algorithm doesn't want you to do. <laughs> if you want to get the algorithm on your side. I make my videos really long. I don't have transitions in them with um, bumper music or uh, sound effects or anything. I don't do any of that. It's just usually one long edit or maybe two or three edits in there if I have to turn off the camera for some reason. It's kind of simple and YouTube doesn't really re reward that because most people don't have the patience to sit through it. If you do, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Because um, I kind of do the videos the way I like my own videos. I, I watch stuff like this. Um, I... It, people also ask me about what YouTube channels I watch. Well, I kind of watch a little bit of everything. On, when they talk about ham tubers, <laughs> the truth is um, I don't watch a ton of amateur radio YouTube videos um, because my watching time is sort of limited. And um, so I tend to be, when I watch YouTube, I end up watching travel channels and things like that. And I watch stuff with my family. But there are some, there are some channels I really like a lot. And I've been tempted to present some of those sometimes, the ones I really like. But what I do is I usually just include them in my posts on qrpr.com because the truth is I don't want to leave anyone out. There's some really good people with good channels, and I don't want them to feel left out if I forget to mention their channel because they're just, there's some really good ones. But I can tell you this, most of the channels I watch tend to be smaller channels, ones with 20,000 or less subscribers usually. Not always. Um, there's some real exceptions to that. Um, Ham Radio Crash Course is one. I'll, I'll watch uh, some of Josh's videos. He has some really interesting ones sometimes. And um, Alan, W2AEW, he has a really big channel and he deserves it. So wonder, he has a wonderful channel. Um, you know, more about building and uh, test equipment and stuff like that. And um, just really fascinating stuff. Um, and... Um, yeah, a lot of just sm smaller channels that I like to keep up with. Um, and so I kind of do my videos that way. I just, I don't expect everyone to watch them. I'm not trying to become a billionaire <laughs> or support myself off of my YouTube channel. So I don't really go for the algorithm. I don't go for the same kind of um, monetization and stuff. I don't judge anyone for doing that at all. In fact... I guess if you're going to go the YouTube route, and especially if you want to make a living off of it, you really need to pay attention to the algorithm and stuff. But I don't bother with it, and it's kind of liberating, frankly. I, I don't even look at my stats page. I can't tell you the last time I looked at my stats page. Because frankly, I don't want to know what videos are doing better than others. Because I like doing what I do, and I don't want that to have an influence on me. I just, you know, I know some people are going to appreciate some videos, and others not, and... That's fine for me. I kind of figure if someone wants to be here, they can be here. And if they don't, there's better channels for them out there. A lot better channels than mine. 
And I really feel like I really feel like my subscribers, my viewers, come along with me on the journey. And maybe it's because I don't edit them. I feel that way. And I kind of like that. People will talk to me about some of the activations I've done. I see them at Hamvention or something. And and I was like, yeah, I kind of felt like you were there. Because <laughs> it does feel that way to me. Okay, let's get the... Uh, see that old shoe? Oh, a lot of people do that. It's ridiculous. Okay, will this tripod stay here if I do this? Or is it going to want to fall over? Hold it with my knee. Okay, I see my weight I left over there, but it doesn't really matter. With trees like this, when you got these really dense branches, especially that are kind of grabby, you definitely want to use this type of line, the thicker poly line, as opposed to like two millimeter line or something, because the thicker poly line glides through those much, much, much better. They're less, um, well, I should say the two, mil two millimeter Marlowe line I use is very slick and it, it works well, but, the, um, but if I'm being honest, this stuff's better. It's just thicker, so it's a little more bulky. If you're doing a soda activation or something, this takes up more space in your pack. But if you are going to encounter trees with thick bark, grabby bark, um, you know, with lots and lots and lots of dense branches, you definitely, I'm even pointing this way, you're not really, um, you definitely want to use this thicker line and a heavier weight in those situations. Or if you're throwing a line way up into a tree, you want to use a heavier weight and you want to use, I still don't use over 12 ounces, but I won't use one of my eight ounce weights if I'm throwing a line way up into a tree because there's a decent chance that the weight of the line itself will keep the, will keep the um, throw weight from making it through. And if that throw weight doesn't make it through, there's a good chance you're gonna get caught. So there you go. I'm thirsty. It is hot today. This feels like summer. I was made for like Nordic temperatures. <laughs> Not this hot stuff. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna pack up my camera and my audio stuff, so. And then pack up some trash to take with me as well. Oh, I hate this. <laughs> I'm going to end up checking this whole site before I leave here. Um, but like I say, okay, really quick lesson here if you've never seen this before. And if you're activating soda, poda, any of those things where you're going out in the woods, you want to be very well aware of this stuff right here. That is poison ivy. And if you get into that anywhere here in North Carolina, see how it's just everywhere? Once you kind of see it, it's easy to spot then. Usually it can have shiny leaves depending on the time of year. It can have kind of little shiny leaves. But it's leaves of three. There's often like a little red dot there in the middle of it. And if I brush up against that, I'm going to get poison ivy. The stuff is just like, I'm super allergic to it. Uh, so I avoid it at all costs. I'm very well aware of what it looks like for that reason. So um, before I forget, let me take a picture of my backpack as well so that can be put in the in the field report. Now this is quiet. I like this. <laughs> so I better say goodbye now. Again, thank you so much to my Patreon and Coffee Fund supporters. You are awesome. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope you get a chance to go out and play a little bit of radio. And above all, be kind to one another out there because all we got on this whole planet is each other. Take care. And until next time, Seven twos.